is known as international style. Simply, this is refers to as modernism, and it was imported from Europe. Strictly, there is a very progressive school design known as the Bauhaus, founded in Germany by Walter Grohl. We also have a new modern style underway currently, and it's nameless. So that, in a few minutes, is a architecture evolution. I'll hand out the quizzes momentarily. And for those who visit the bar downstairs, we will check comprehension downriver in about a half hour. For the Wanda Vista Tower Hotel is our new third tallest building at 101 floors, 1,191 feet in height, yeah. and designed by Studio Gang. Based here in Chicago, led by Genie Gang, it is the new tallest building in the world designed by a female-led architectural firm. And it's a luxury building with condos above a five-star hotel. Condos on floors 71 to 92, the uppermost stem of the building, are full floor units. Uppermost floor hit the market for $17.4 million. I'm not sure if that's still available in case anyone was interested. But I can confirm it was not the highest priced transaction in the building. That figure goes to the purchaser on floor 71 and 72. And uh, 8,000 square feet of outdoor space. We're concentrating mostly on the right hand side of the most few during the last recession. What makes these postmodern styles are they're taking cues from the past and decorating the exterior. It was that round of Dr. Luca down at the very top, she commands the mechanical tree. Then we have these five little townhouses down below that harken back to those old tiny urban neighborhoods. They're fields, short of one pass. Then you have the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District here behind you. Now it flows away from the lake. Why? Well, a century ago, Chicago had the world's most disgusting, vile, and filthy waterway. Should all these factories in a very industrial city dumping industrial waste into the Chicago River? Operation I've ever seen after it opened under this state. We flushed all that filth away from the lake and sent it right on down to St. Louis. And our problem is soft. Designed uh, by Andy Smith of Skidmore Wings and Merrill. Downtown Caps University of Chicago's graduate school of business, and almost you pull beyond it. How much of the west side has no windows? That's because the director of that school told architect Dirk Lohan, I do not want my students distracted by the beautiful views outside. Extensive renovation, which added the glass pavilion in front, our new Apple store designed by Foster and Partners of Great Britain. And then right behind there, the beautiful Neo Gothic Tribune Tower, result of an international design competition to design the most beautiful office building in the world with a grand prize of $50,000. The entry to see beside you is fitted by two New York architects, John Meads Howell, Raymond Hood, completed in 1925 with a top top model after the butter top cathedral of Rouen, France. North Rest is called Pine Street, tiny residential street that's then turned into a commercial boulevard. First new commercial building on the boulevard, the regularly built the clock tower, completed in 1921 and designed in Spanish Revival style by Grant Anderson, Probes and White. With the big lease sign, so big it's the largest sign in Chicago by square footage, each letter no less than 20 feet 6 inches tall, is the Trump International Tower Hotel which was completed in early 2010, designed by Adrian Smith, formerly of Skidmore, Owings & Merrill, who has since left that firm to start his own practice known as Adrian Smith Gordon Gill Architect. The composition of ceiling glass. The i beams hold the windows in place, also work to give the facade this wonderful sense of depth, texture, and proportion. Means as fans are saying less is more, and God is in the details. We call it attention to that, decoration of the Bauhaus School in Germany, quite the contrast now between student and professor. Marina City was originally planned to include affordable housing for the janitor's unit of Chicago, but to build a residential community, what at the time was a commercial industrial city core, that incorporated a lot of amenities to attract people to live here. Two of their own shops, restaurants, offices, bowling alley, amphitheater, their own marina down at River Level. The figure is with that parking garage, it is valet only. You do not self-park your car by HOK. Okay. Then the green building designed by Skidmore Owings and Merrill. Former headquarters, Quaker Oaks, holds off the Safe American Bar Association. That's bar as in lawyers, not taverns. It's undergone extensive renovation where the whole bottom of the building is reconstructed for this new four-level restaurant space. Completed in 1914, designed by Nimmons and Fellows. Really good example of the Chicago school style, style of our earliest high-rises. Notice the grid of red brick that covers up the structure within the building, such as vertical cobs and horizontal floor plates. The voids of the grid are filled in with the large windows to allow maximum amounts of light and air deep into the interior floor. Fairly similar to the mid-20th century of style buildings we have throughout Chicago, some might even call it modernist revival. And set back of that two level interior river We have well. that grid of masonry again, the large windows set into the voids of the grid. Strong emphasis on vertical lines. Uninterrupted vertical piers running all the way up the building, clad in limestone. 
recessed windows, the darker green spindles from the panes of glass on those vertical lines really pop visually. When this was commissioned by the Marshall Field Company, that famous growing station, they're also real estate developers, uh, this opened in the midst of the Great Depression. It was a financial disaster for the fields. They sold the whole thing for a fraction of its cost to Joseph P. Nobody knows about the Holiday Inn Hotel. Until the show moved out, offices moved in, they punched some holes in the exterior. Kennedys don't own that anymore. They sold the merchandise from our office well in the 1990s for well over $4.3 million. caisson system that stretches down about 70 80 feet below the one nautical theme into those it's around portal shaped windows triangular sail shaped windows and the overall shape of the theme like a triangular sail actual food storage and the way they did this by very thick brick walls there's a cork and horse there between the brick for insulation and no window narrow site wedged between the river bank and back to railroad line to the west and you have this one and a half acre public city park which is elevated on top of that white wall the park is elevated so it spans over the existing railroad tracks, which are in the building. For the structural engineers at Magnus and Magic and Associates, the largest rolled steel sections in the world were used on this building. And I've been in there during construction. The columns are referred to are literally In the Amtrak rail yard, we passed the way down here, controls the movement of it. And they do have to move this on demand, too, because it crosses a a very historic site in 1868, when the convention hall was built there called the Windblock, which was a public and national convention on that year. We would now be able to link it for the president. 